Hello my friends of Genshin Impact, my name is Tildrell and the last day of school for this year is finally over, so I'm wishing you all a merry Sithmas, no matter when this video right here is getting released. I thought that since Genshin Impact is over one year old now, it's finally time that I do a tier list of my own so you all can evaluate your characters, no matter which one you're getting. And in case you don't know who I am and what I do on this channel, I play Genshin Impact since week 2 of its release, so I'm a pretty veteran player. The first two months I played purely free to play and from the third month onward I yeah, pay in between 0 and 15 bucks per month, Yeah, depending on what I want to buy and how I'm feeling about the game generally. And of course, in every stage of the game, I achieved to beat the Spiral Abyss with 36 stars, with a full star rating since the beginning. So I have a little bit of credibility and you can trust my verdict on all those characters, at least to some amount. When you take a look at this tier list, you will notice that I don't go with the usual five terms of tier lists like S tier, A tier, B tier, blah, 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 because for me it's too unspecific. I want to be able to diversify and really articulate my verdict and opinions on yeah, every single character. So I'm going with a point system starting from 1 out of 10 points to 10 out of 10 and yeah, with everything in between. I think like that it's yeah much better digestible and easier to explain for me and easier to understand for you. Okay, to draw a baseline, let's talk about the Traveler first. In my opinion, it's a slightly under average character. Where is the female one here? Because, um, yeah, although it should be a 5 star character power level wise, the Traveler, no matter which element you're going for, is all the time a little bit underwhelming and easily surpassed by four-star character counterparts, okay? Take for example the Animo element. The moment you pull Sucrose, you don't need the Animo Traveler anymore because Sucrose does everything better. The Geo Traveler is just used because there are so few Geo characters in this game at, uh, even now, although they were even scarcer in the beginning of the game, yeah, and the Electro Traveler is a nice concept, I give Mihoyo that, it's a nice concept, but this sigil collecting and everything takes so much time in fights, especially in the Abyss, that you lose out on potential DPS. Yeah, the Traveler is just the character that you go for when you have nothing else to play or you lack a specific character or element. Now to place an anchor in the middle ground, I will put Chong Yun to 5 out of 10, because he's not a bad character, but he's not good either. He's just meh, okay? Most of the time he is just used in jank team cups where you want to infuse your main DPS with cryo so a specific burst or a specific skill hits harder to amplify it with melt or yeah, with whatever. He's not that good in the main DPS department, but you can use him as sub DPS. It's just that there are better options out there and you really only use him, as I said in Chang team comps, when you want to play around with his cryo application. To get someone at the bottom of the list, I pick Barbara, <laughs> 1 out of 10. She is such a bad character and if you are using her, just try to get any kind of healer on your account. Only use Barbara if you are a new player and you don't have Bennett or Diona or any other 5 star healer yet. Okay, Barbara is the bottom of the line. She is just plain bad because she only can heal and the trade off for her healing is that she applies the wet status to your whole team. And yeah, you only need one cryo enemy and you are permafrozen sometimes and that kills you in the spiral abyss and uh, against some enemies in the overworld when you're not such an experienced player as well. I know that you can equip the Dragon Slayer book on her so that you can at least give another character a 40% attack buff on refinement rank 5, but the Dragon Slayer book limits and restricts you in your playstyle 
as well because now whenever you let's say need a quick heal and you are actually needing to uh, swap to your sub dps you can't do that because your main dps needs to get this dragon slayer buff and you fuck up your rotation anytime you yeah need an uh, need a spontaneous healing and before you type in the comments down below that barbara can be played as main dps and there are so many videos on youtube where she does trillions of damage i tell you the following you can build any character in this game as your main dps because uh, you only need the right artifacts to get big damage numbers okay barbara can do big damage numbers but but so can every other character in this game you just need more work to do for barbara to reach high damage numbers um instead of just picking a different character who's better for the job okay Okay, and now let's just work the roster through. Let's begin with Albedo. I'd give Albedo a solid 8 out of 10 because he's a kind of niche character, but not too much niche. You can play him outside of pure GU team comps as well. He is a solid off-field sub-DPS, and uh, every time you activate his burst, he buffs uh, the elemental mastery of your team, which is quite nice. The only thing is that um, for a 5-star character, it doesn't feel enough. Next up, Amber. And since I gave Barbara a 1 out of 10, I give Amber a 2 out of 10. Because at least she has a dedicated role that she should fulfill. But yeah, to fulfill that role, she needs a buff. A tremendous buff or a rework. She's doing too little damage to be a charged attack carry or a, a reliable charged attack carry. And far too much work to do damage there are other characters that function with yeah, much less work next up is ayaya our ayaka what am i going to do with you are you eight or nine eight or nine but i think you are universally more useful than Albedo, I place her in 9 out of 10. Ayaka is a very solid carry, and I think that Mihoyo learned from their mistakes on catching, especially the element infusion. Yeah, you can proc it really reliably with Ayaka, and there is yeah, no problem with her whatsoever. Sometimes, yeah, just sometimes, her damage output is a little low, and you really have to work for it and make your reactions pop. Next up, Beido. I would give Beido a 7 out of 10 because she is a very niche character and you really have to master her in order to make the most out of her overall kit. You need to master the art of countering and yeah, perform perfect counters again and again. And um, the game itself, especially the enemies, um, make her a little bit weaker than she maybe could be because sometimes your enemies take ages to attack you and on some points it even happened to me that i pressed the counter skill because i was expecting an enemy to attack at this very moment they are already like and suddenly no one is attacking and you're standing there for three years waiting for an attack to come so you at least get a little bit damage off and it doesn't come <laughs> now bennett um i guess it's clear 10 out of 10 uh, reliable buffer op buffer reliable healer i would not say op healer because it caps out at 75 percent of hp but you're basically not dying with him on your team his e for some reason does double damage on enemies shields okay if you have problems with abyss lectors or any other yeah shield enemy with elemental shields you spam it and whittle down those shields in double uh, in half the time now diluc my second five star character where do i put you nah seven six nah seven yeah on the same level as Beto because Dilluk is a weird combination of a burst and a sustained DPS and he can't do either job properly and that's a big problem for him. Yeah, he doesn't have a specific role he can unfold his full potential in and you will run into the problem eventually that his E is on cooldown 
and the pyro infusion of your burst has run out so you're standing here with physical attacks although you built him for pyro damage and you <laughs> just attack your enemies with this wet noodle of his claymore and you pray to the archons that yeah the cooldowns get ready faster now diona i give diona a 10 out of 10 because for some reason in the beginning of genshin impact lifespan the balance team of mihoyo <laughs> gathered around at their table and they were like hmm would it be good for the balance of this game if we created a four star character that heals and shields could this do something to the game balance nah it will be fine we just make an overstacked support character what could happen <laughs> uh, speaking of 10 out of 10 characters Fischl. yeah no questions asked 10 out of 10 she does everything a sub dps needs to do and you could even play her as main dps although as main dps i would rate her like eight or seven okay because she deals physical damage then and physical damage is always subpar to other damage types but as sub dps 10 out of 10 she does everything she needs to do and if you equip her with uh, the tenacity of the millilith set you buff your whole team's attack stat for 20 percent non-stop because every time us attacks it counts as an elemental skill damage okay so if your official doesn't have tenacity of the millilith equipped okay then farm an offensive tenacity set okay and the 10 out of 10s keep on going can you yeah no questions asked as well as Fischl just in the main DPS role she does way too much damage and maybe Mihoyu didn't know how damage calculation in their game works in the early stages I don't know why but her bow shots her charge shots are atomic bombs another member in the 10 out of 10 club is Hu Tao because at least in my opinion and I know that the majority of players will agree with me okay Hu Tao is the definition of a good main DPS and maybe even, or I'm sure, the best main DPS character in this entire game. Her whole kit works together like clockwork. She can do single target damage. She deals ridiculous OP AoE damage with her burst. And if you main her, you can clear it all. She will, yeah, make Abyss clears the smoothest experience for you uh, ever. Next up, Jean. Nah, that's hard. She is my first five star I've ever gotten and I am quite disappointed in her. In my opinion, she has a failed character concept. I give her a six out of ten because, yeah, in my opinion, in order to make her viable, she would need a changed second ascension passive and she needs a different ascension stat right now she gets healing bonus per as ascension which is kind of useless she needs attack percent for her ascension stat so with every ascension her heals and her damage is getting higher because her healing is based off her maximum attack so why doesn't she have attack percent as ascension stat i don't know why mihoyo gave her fucking healing bonus and the second thing they need to change is her strange second ascension passive right now it does the strange uh, rng healing that's far too weak and mihoyo should change it in the following whenever you are activating jean's elemental skill the scale blade the next let's say three auto attacks of her or the next three auto or charged attacks of her gets an animo infusion this would be the game changer that uh, would get her from 6 out of 10 to 9 or even 10 out of 10 because then she uh, has this intended hybrid healer and burst sub dps gameplay next up kea solid cryo applicator solid physical carry if you're in the early and mid game so i give him a 7 out of 10 he will just get better with constellations although his fourth one where he gets for some reason i think a shield when he drops below 30 percent hp is pretty wasted 
you don't want to have safety net constellations on a damage character. Okay, that's bad. Now, Keqing, or as I call her sometimes, the prototype of Ayaka. I mean, Keqing has more mobility, she's fun to play, but from a usefulness standpoint, I give her a 6 out of 10. I think she's on par with Jean uh, on this tier list. I think that's a fair comparison. Nothing more to say, yeah. It's a shame that she is that weak comparatively to other characters in, the, in this game because I like her um, character concept and her art style, her looks very much. When we talk about Klee, I can never understand the hype that she uh, has gotten in the beginning of the game because before um, Baal came, before the Raiden Shogun graced us with her presence, Klee had the most selling banner ever. Yeah, well, I would yeah also place her next to Jean and Keqing. She is the prototype of Yan Fei's gameplay. She's very clunky. I know she can amplify the team's damage and she, for some, she's a fun pyro DPS character. But I think now she got pushed into the sub DPS category and there are much better options for a five star she is kind of underwhelming and you need very many constellations in order to really make her work okay lisa i know i'm repeating myself but six out of ten should be fair and just for her she's a very niche character you can't really play her until you unlock constellation one or two where she gets this uh, stagger resistance but in physical damage team comps she can be quite useful and come in handy because um, her burst her elemental burst decreases the physical resistance of your enemies so she has her place and she has her use in physical damage team comps but other than that, when you don't really need that from her burst, she doesn't see that much play or yeah, any play at all. Mona is an interesting character because uh, many players think that she is bad. I myself think that she is quite useful. I give her an 8 out of 10. She is a perfect damage amplifier and a taunting character which means enemies won't attack you most of the time because the cooldown of her E skill is almost the same as the duration. I think it's only off for like two seconds. It's quite good. And the Omen debuff she applies with her elemental burst is useful to say the least. Okay, you crank up your damage numbers to a high amount when you use her correctly. Now, Ning Wang, after I have played around with her myself for a little bit, I can confidently say that I would place her in eight out of 10. She is a solid DPS character, but she gets held back by the fact that she is Geo. So all the really high damage amplifying reactions are locked away for her, okay? She can't uh, make use of Vaporize, she can't make use of Melt. If she would be a Pyro character or a Cryo character, a Hydro character, she would be up there because the damage output she has is quite ridiculous if you know what you're doing, but she's Geo. She can only work with Geo. No. Mm. So yeah, eight, eight, 8 out of 10 is justified. Now we have an interesting pick, Noelle, because uh, during the lifespan of your Genshin Impact account, she will undergo changes. When you first get her, yeah, I would rate her like 3 out of 10 or 4 out of 10. But once you get her to Constellation 6, she shines and she is, yeah, I guess I will put her in 9 out of 10. Yeah, I guess I put 9 out of 10. Now we have a character that goes to the opposite side of the list. <laughs> Chi Chi. She gets shit on by Diona already. So yeah, 2 out of 10. I think no character is as bad as Barbara. Chi Chi has a dedicated role. She can be your healer, but there are already healers out there who heal and do so much more for your team. So why should you settle for a character that, that just heals? and does nothing else uh, except, okay, maybe a little bit of damage. Yoo-hoo, yoo-hoo, look, Chi-Chi does damage. Wolf Boy Razor. 
Razor is a good and solid character. Um, physical DPS, mm, yeah, gets held a little bit by the fact that he deals physical damage. I would give him an 8 out of 10. He only gets better with constellations, takes resistances of your enemies away, deals massive damage with every swing. Good character. You can't go wrong if you have him on your account with at least mm, constellation 4, I'd say, when you get this bite thing. I think bite is constellation 4. Level him up, invest in him, you can't go wrong. Cute Lady Sucrose, I give her a 9 out of 10 because she is crazy useful. She makes so many team comps even possible together with, with uh, Viridescent Venera, the OP <laughs> Animo artifact set. And I stand firm on my opinion that Sucrose and Kazuha are the same characters, just that Kazuha buffs uh, the elemental damage output of your team a little bit more and Sucrose has more crowd control. Child! I personally don't like this character, but I know that in some team comps he is quite useful. I give him a 7 out of 10 because even though you call him your main DPS, he isn't your main DPS. In a child team comp, you need to invest heavily in every single character, or at least in every single DPS character in said team. Child is just this, let's say, glue DPS that yeah, glues together the whole team and makes every single DPS char in this team shine even brighter than they would do on their own. Okay, after a longer break for the 10 out of 10 club, we come to Venti. Clear 10 out of 10 for me. He has a black hole, he sucks every um, lightweight and some middleweight enemies also into it. His burst is, yeah, up all the time. I think he has only a burst cost of 40 or 60 at most, but I think his burst is 40 <laughs> energy cost. And he is one of the strongest characters in this game, together with Hu Tao and Ganyu. Sheng Ling, the Crescent Pike physical DPS carry for early and mid game players and the OP elemental sub DPS for late game players, I'd say. Um, yeah, nine out of 10. No questions asked. Almost, almost 10 out of 10, but I place her in, in 9 out of 10. She's very useful. She is a solid character. Invest in her no matter in which role you want to play her. You can't go wrong. Now, Xiao. I know that he has a big fan club, but I don't like him. I don't think that the animal element is a main DPS element and that any character from this element is suited to do that role. This is why he has so over stacked stats, okay? When you look at his stats, um, every other character with those stats would be broken beyond belief, okay? Trust me, Mihoyo knew that Animo isn't the main carry element. This is why they made <laughs> this character so over stats, but... Um, hmm. Where do I place you, dude? Where do I place you? Six out of 10 or seven, because your stats are so high. Mm, I would give him a 6.5. Let's give him a seven. Yeah, I give him a seven. And and his playstyle, even his playstyle is, it, it's so boring because all you do is space, left click, space, left click, space, left click, space, left click, till the end of time or until he runs out of HP. And it's it's very clunky. I would say that this is the beta test or the prototype for Kazuha. Because, at least gameplay-wise, Mi Mihoyo nailed Kazuha's mobility and his freedom of movement. And Xiao is that just a little clunkier. Ching Chu. Almost 10 out of 10, I give him a 9 out of 10. I know he is OP, but he is very reliant on a specific weapon. You need Sacrificial Sword, at least on Refinement Rank 3, the best of course on Refinement Rank 5, in order to make him really work. His E has a much too long cooldown, and because he is reliant on a specific weapon, 
I give him 9 out of 10. But you need to build him if you want to get far in Genshin Impact. Yeah, and uh, the other reason why I put him in 9 out of 10 is the fact that he applies wet to himself whenever you cast his elemental skill. And that would be a reason to place him even uh, further down the list. But because he is so strong, the trade-off for this wet status can be paid. Next up, Sin Yan. I personally like Sin Yan, but she is a very niche character and if played outside that niche, pretty weak. Additionally, she still has bugs with her kit that will most likely never get patched out, so I place her on 6 out of 10, sadly. But if you have a physical damage team and Sin Yan has some constellations on her, just build her and use her. You can see her in action in many of my videos in almost all of my physical damage team comes. She is amazing at shredding your opponent's resistances, at buffing up your physical main DPS, at everything a physical damage team comp needs. The Song Dong, one of the best characters in the entire game. 10 out of 10, no questions asked. And even although um, those Rift Hounds now damage through shields, and this corrosion debuff exists in this game, I guess purely uh, in an attempt of Mihoyo to nerf him somehow, <laughs> he's still 10 out of 10. He shreds every resistance from your enemies, he crowd controls them for years, and the pillar comes in quite handy for blocking some projectiles, or yeah, keeping the tenacity of the Millilith buff up permanently. Rosaria. Amazing main DPS, amazing sub DPS. There are no downsides, except maybe that she is kind of squishy. If you don't have her in Constellation 6, I would say she's 8 out of 10. I have her in Constellation 6, so she's 9 out of 10. But yeah, since this is an uh, overall tier list and not a specific tier list for my account, I place her on 8 out of 10. One of my favorite characters, Eula. Um, she is a powerhouse. She packs a big punch, but she has problems in her kit and the way her stacks for her burst explosions are accumulated. Because, for example, if you attack a character with a shield on it, then you don't get stacks, although you bring in all those hits. And she has, yeah, another caveats built in that are unnecessary and won't they won't get patched out yeah so i have to place her in nine out of ten she is strong but she's definitely not the strongest and being a physical dps doesn't help her either because as i said multiple times in my other videos as well Physical damage is the worst kind of damage in Genshin Impact. Elemental damage trumps physical damage in every way. Yan Fei, the improved version of Klee, with a lower damage ceiling overall, but with a much smoother gameplay and better skills, more range. She is an amazing main DPS for a 4 star. I guess. Yen Fei is a four and a half star. Okay, so I place her in, should I place her in seven? No, eight, eight out of 10. If you invest heavily in her and have multiple constellations, you, you are a happy player. You can't go wrong with her as Pyro main DPS. Kosuha! Yes, I place him the same level as I placed uh, Sucrose in, nine out of 10. I know maybe I'm making multiple enemies now, <laughs> but in my opinion, Kazuha is overhyped. He is not the best character in the game. Uh, all the players who, who say, he's, he's, he's so good, he can do double swirls. Sucrose on Constellation 1 can do double swirls. And she has a better and more reliable crowd control in addition to that. I don't know why people are so obsessed with Kazuha. It's, it's really strange. He's a solid unit, don't get me wrong, but he is not OP and he is not one of the best characters in the game. Kazuo compared to those in this category up here is weaker, is not that good. And I have to be honest. Uh, Yoimiya, my girl, my favorite bow main DPS. It's so sad what Mihoyo did to you. She is, in my opinion, the safe and ranged 
Brutal because she can deal out crazy single target damage. Yeah, just watch my Abyss Clear videos. She is doing the job. A main DPS should do very reliable, but uh, Miho, you will never patch out her shortcomings and her bugs and her glitches. And to this day, sometimes her burst doesn't connect to enemies, although you shoot it in their faces, okay? And <laughs> sometimes her uh, pyro-infused shots just miss your enemies. They fly by them, although they should be homing missiles. So yeah, eight, 8 out of 10. I'm very sad. Her potential is huge. And if she worked as intended and maybe got a little bit more damage on her burst, she could easily be 9 or 10 out of 10. But with all those shortcomings, 8 out of 10, sadly. Now, one of my biggest regrets in the entire game, Sayu. I thought I could make her work. I thought I could make her usable as a healer in an elemental damage focused team. But sadly, she doesn't work as I thought. I even got her to Constellation 6, got her the perfect artifact set, everything, and she doesn't quite work as well as Diona or Bennett. I mean, if you compare any healer with Diona and Bennett, they will be weaker because those two are just too good. But yeah, she is slightly above av average, sadly. So on par with the Traveler. Raiden Shogun, the epitome of what an Electro character should be. Crazy utility, um, crazy little burst windows and yeah, usefulness overall. 10 out of 10, really. If you don't have Baal, snatch her in the next rerun, whenever that will come. Kujusara, aesthetics, 10 out of 10. Usefulness, yeah, on the lower end, 3 out of 10. At most, her whole kit doesn't make sense. I even reviewed her in a standalone video. If you want to know why I give her a 3 out of 10 in depth, then just watch my older video, okay? I don't want to drag on with her. Uh, for that long in this video, just no. Then we have Kokomi. Oh my god, underwhelming healer. Um, should I place her on three or four? I guess I give her four out of, out of ten. But don't get me wrong, if Kokomi was a four star character uh, with those stats or even a little bit uh, less pumped stats with less damage output and everything, she would be up there. But for a 5-star character with the competition of Bennett and Diona and every other support characters that are in this game, she, she can't be rated high, okay? I'm very disappointed, or I was very disappointed in her, on her release. And if you like her, you can make her work. She can basically... Uh, 24 7 apply hydro to your opponents for vaporize or um, freeze or any other reaction i give her that but for a five star character she is not good aloy the character from a very cool game horizon zero dawn if you didn't play it until now just download it it's very cheap because it's an older game by now but in Genshin, she is quite disappointing. I give her 3 out of 10 because she is a more complicated Yoimiya with less payoff. You don't have a point and click cryo infusion. You have to collect all those cores. You lose time. You could use with any other character to pump out more damage. And yeah, her burst does more damage than Yoimiya's, but the overall damage is much lower. Toma, another fan favorite, the household character. I give him 4 out of 10 because of the way his shields work. And yeah, it's a wasted character concept. Would have been interesting, but... Hmm. Arataki Ito. In my analysis video, I rated him 6.5 out of 10 for good reasons. I mean, his charge attack based playstyle roots him in place, which is a huge drawback already. And his burst even decreases his resistances, okay? In my analysis video, I read that wrong. I even thought that it would increase his resistances because he's forced to stand still 
in his burst duration. It's 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 very strange, yeah. So not 6.5. I rate him six out of ten, and that's it. And the last of the life characters, Goru. A uh, pretty good character, sadly only suited for Geo teams that scale of defense. I still give him a 7 out of 10 because what he does, he does very good. So, yeah, I think 7 out of 10 is fair. Um, yeah, and that was it. Okay, that was my tier list video. Let me know down in the comments below if you agree or disagree with my ranking decisions. And as always, I hope that we see each other in my other videos as well. Bye!